the awareness is done in Uganda. Even at the local levels, no chairman of a village can set up an executive, his executive, without a woman. And you don't expect noise from the women in the village. So what is remaining now is the real economic empowerment, you know, putting money into the women's pockets through opening their opportunities towards uh, projects, towards uh, affordable finances, okay, uh, affordable loans, and uh, workplaces. And women can, if given an opportunity, can really turn around things with little push. So if we could focus on economic empowerment, we will see many more girl children going to school and staying in school. When you talk about legislation, women of Uganda have laid a foundation, not only for the women at the national level, but up to the lower, lowest level of governance. So that footprint is there. We have associations. We have Forum for Women in Development, which we started when I was a member of the Constituent Assembly. I'm one of the pioneers with engineer Winnie Bianima, Miriam Atende, you know, Gertrude uh, Lubega from Masaka, Hanifa Kawoya. We came together and our intention was to look out for the women who want to join politics and train them. And I'm happy that Forum for Women in, in, in Democracy or in development is still running and many, many more NGOs came up and they are operating. When it comes to gender parity, the speaker almost ceases to be neutral on that. You expect her to take the route for support in her chair for speakership. You can't win a battle when she's in the chair, when you are talking about issues regarding gender parity. Then we have uh, people like the former vice president, who at one time was a minister in the Ministry of Women in Development, I think. Then I also remember Namire Mbebi Tamazire. Namire Mbebi Tamazire has been a minister on all, almost all regimes, and she's been fighting for the girl child. We have Maggie Chugozi, when she's performing, she always brings she always um, brings out the issue of women. She even has a forum, I think, to make sure that women are helped in a special way. Those women who are entrepreneurs are helped in a special way to access affordable finances. We've been having women in the judiciary, um, Justice Monda Faith, uh, Justice Julia Septinde. Uh, uh, yeah, those amongst the judiciary. The late Chikonyogo, she came to Nabisunsa Girls School when I was there as, as a, a student. She addressed us. We visited her, and she used to encourage mothers to tell their daughters to say no when they are approached by men who think that they could divert them from pursuing their careers pursuing their you know education you know objectives we have passed uh, policies in parliament which are specifically uh, targeting to push gender parity if if you are a minister and you bringing you're bringing a request uh, for example a project the women in parliament will not let you, you know, uh, move on with your request unless they are satisfied that that project has got a gender component. Through our association called UOPA, Uganda Women Parliamentary Association, we go an extra mile to observe what is happening around us. Young girls who are impregnated, you find us coming together to make sure that we assist and then we also uh, find lapses in our laws 
which we bridge and then move forward and sensitize the masses on how to use the, the, the prevailing laws to pursue those who are stepping on the path of uh, gender equity or gender parity. I'm calling upon my colleagues, the women, to realize and always keep on reflecting to, on the fact, the fact that naturally we were created in a special way. We were created to accommodate. We were created to produce. And production is not only in terms of producing children, no. We are, we are, the, we are, we are the, the factor or the industry for production. We have to produce children, we have to produce wealth, we have to produce friendship, we have to produce 